of your favorite podcast on the planet, Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's up? Hello. We have an awesome guest today, Kendra Morris. Nice. Hi. Kick some ass, an amazing collage artist and musician. Thank you. Dude, you just know every collage artist in New York, don't you? <laughs> well, that's part of the plan. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Create a big ass gang and be all tough and stuff and make artwork. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Morgan's brought you by today. So do you want to tell us a little bit yeah. more about her? Just so much. I don't even know where to start. Uh, basically, I mean, um, what do you consider yourself more of a, a visual artist or... So with music or art or both just uh, down the middle? I feel like it's the long, I, I just like to say I make stuff. Mm. I just make, I you just do. create. I mean, I've been, a, I think my, I've been singing, writing music the longest. Like mm -hmm. that's where I really started. But like going back to like my earliest memories, it was always doing it all. How does it all like come together? But I would say probably... Right now, right now in my life, I've been doing a lot more music. So, right. as today, I'd probably be... nice. And yeah. you're working on a new album. Yeah, that's huge. What number album is this? I think it's six. Wow. I think it's a six, the sixth full length record, which is kind of crazy because I don't know how I <laughs> how I accumulated that. Yeah, you just like you just, just do it, and then one day you wake up and you've got six LPs, and no. you're like, how did I do this? So you'd say you're probably most well known for music. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But although like there have been some like, I've done a lot of collage animation, like with, I. that's how I started doing collage was cause I could never afford my own music videos. Oh, so cool. I was like, I'll just make, make my own. And then I always really loved like, um, I always thought stop motion was, I loved the look of it. I loved how like the analog feel of it. Like you could, mm. you could almost, when you'd like watch like a Monty, Monty Python or something, you could feel the like hands in that. You could right, feel the, of course. so that, that I was drawn to that. So that's when I started making videos for myself, but then. Terry Gilliam's yeah, uh, like that, Monty Python vibe. And then I, as a musician, you know, I would put up little clips that I did for myself and being in the, you know, a lot of my friends as musicians, like they're like, who's doing those videos for nice. you? So then I started getting work. <laughs> From and, that. and then I did a video for this guy who's, he's really big in Europe. His name's uh, Skin Shape. And I did a right. animation for him and that video's. That blown yeah, up. Yeah, that's a yeah. beautiful, beautiful song and a beautiful video. Um, and I found his music through your video, but he's yeah. got some great stuff. Oh, he's incredible. Skin I've done two. Shape. Yeah. He so does everything, right? Yeah, he's actually finally, he doesn't tour, but he's finally touring. He's coming. Oh, cool. He's going to come through New York. I want to go oh, see him. Oh, I would him. love to. I think to he's playing at Brooklyn it. Made. Ooh. soon yeah keep nice. me in touch about that well it's really true right like work. the mo they always say like necessity is the mother of invention like yeah. you need you couldn't for your own music videos so you made them and now that's the thing that's kind of like popped you off that's awesome yeah. i made a video once for a budget of six dollars hmm. nice yeah <laughs> my friend was like well, i want to make a music video and my neighbor across the way uh was like gone to film school and you know does all the stuff with after effects and editing uh, and we ended up going to a place called Urban Ore in o Oakland that's like a architectural salvage and tried to look for stuff to make a video with. And we found this big roll of like seamless blue paper. And so we're like, let's just do this. And we like set up a blue screen in our backyard in with the sun out and everything and just made a little quick uh, nice. like $6 blue screen video. That's yeah. fun. That's my favorite. My favorite stuff is... The more like DIY, the more like that you had like three things to make something with and had to rely on your brain. Right. That's always the best. Always yeah, the best. Yeah, yeah. Least money, the better the idea usually. It's like that uh, that uh, White Stripes song, Little Room. You know that one? It's like 30 seconds long and it just says when you're in your little room and you're working on something good, if it's really good, you're going to need a bigger room. When you're in the bigger room, you might not know what to do. You might have to think of how you got started working in the little room. Yeah. And that's, that's very true. You know, we're in the little room now, you know, yeah. yes, for our, for our studio. I pressed the button on the record button today. So one day, <laughs> one day somebody else is going to do that for us. It's going to be awesome. 
<laughs> but it might not be. But it might not be it as good. Be like, you might not like that person. You might be like, <laughs> now there's this other person here that pushes the button. And That's right. true. They're a real drag. Yeah, right. Well, that, I think it's cool that we live in a time where it's easier and easier and easier to do all the production yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to get out more directly as an artist, but it has a lot of like pitfalls as well. Uh, you know, uh, I think when you have something like a film that requires like, mm -hmm. you know, 100 people to make, sometimes there's things that we can't make on our own. Uh, you know, there yeah. are things that we need a team to do, and then you're kind of like part of something bigger. But yeah. It's, it's, art can be like a, it, it's really weird. Like art is either a team sport or it's a, a not. Very <laughs> you know? a very lonely place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I go back and forth. I mean, when it comes to music, I, you know, have worked with my brother. I've made a lot of music with my brother. I've made a lot of music with my friend Dave, but it's also about like who you know sometimes because like my friend Dave is a virtuoso and he, mm. you know, he's a classical violinist. And I'm like, I want violin on this song and he can do it like within five minutes. He'll wow. send it right back. I'm like, oh, okay, this is awesome. Yeah. You're a sick man. Well, whatever you do, you get <clears throat> practiced at and you get better at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like the more, you know, people can't conceive of how you make your, cut out animations i'm sure but you've been doing it for a while so you yeah. can just go all right and it happens and it seems like magic to people yeah right. that's the thing that's weird about art right it's like it always feels like people think it's magical they're like just so mystified by anything like painting uh music whatever it is yeah it's time consuming right yeah in regards to stop motion it's oh my just, gosh yeah it, it takes a long time and you've even done a video for uh mf doom yeah, I did that. Oh, was a Zarface bomb throne. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh my gosh! I mean, that was w one of my earlier videos that I did, and that was directly related to doing videos for myself. George and uh, Esoteric from Zarface reached out to me, and they're like, "Who's doing these little animation videos you keep throwing up for you like, for your yeah. own videos?" Right. And I was like, "That's me." And I was like, "Do you want me to?" do one for you nice you know, and that's, that's what, huge and you that's know huge. i did the i've learned to be a lot more organized the way i work but like when i made the storyboards for that i made it on post-it notes nice i saved them all i did stick people on post-it notes and then i thought like okay what what do i like i always try to have a vision first and if yeah. it's beyond me something that maybe like that's way i'm like well then sometimes it's about creating a team okay, maybe these are, this is my vision, but it's about not being stubborn about your vision. Right. Like, okay, mm. like I can do this much, but maybe I create a team and find, and I, for, if you build a team, it's about building a team with people you like. Yeah. Right. Because if you're going to make art, for me, art is so much about the experience too. If I'm going to spend all this time doing art for something, I want to do it with people that I like. Yeah, you know? definitely. So, you have to enjoy it. Yeah. Because so, if you don't enjoy it, like it's, it sucks the fun out of it immediately. Like, yeah. And the product know. comes out like poop. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but for like the bomb throne video, yeah. I built a little mini team. Like my friend Josh was really good with um, graphic animation. And I knew that I wanted, I wanted to do the videos in like three types of artistic well, mediums. Remember, there's right. toys, mm. collage animation, and then there's like cartoon. So I brought my friend Josh in to do all the cartoon, the shiny stuff that I'm like, I'm, I mean, I tell anyone that wants to work with me for a video, I say, you know that my aesthetic is extremely, I am banging the table. <laughs> That's <okay>. my, <laughs> my aesthetic is very deep. I like rough edges. I like, I can I cuss on this? Yeah, totally. I like shit. I like yeah. shitty stuff. I like to see wrinkles. I like mistakes. Mm. I like shake. So yeah. when someone says, I have this much money and I want a video, I go, you do know that I'm going to give you something shitty. Like, right. And I mean shitty in the best sense. Right. Like That's what you're going to get. So for this video I wanted to do, I knew that I wanted some shiny parts too to glue it all together so i reached out to my friend josh and said hey you want to be part of my team Polish these are the post-it notes that i made of the storyboard that's cool and you then, still have them yeah i save everything how do you that's good i think that's a problem with artists I have a lot myself included yeah. there are so many things that i've like burned thrown away lost forgotten that i just wish yeah. i had i wish i had them so bad i can imagine like you know you can frame those post-it notes in yeah. like a little 
a little mat with a bunch of little cutout windows eventually. I'm the weirdo that does keep all this stuff. I keep yeah. it. I have so much shit. Yeah. And it's, a, it's just so much shit that's like always show and tell time. And yeah. like, oh, here he goes again. He found his report card. <laughs> yeah. Dude, here he goes Did again. Did you saw that box here yeah. with like weird stuff? Uh, no, but it. I got more boxes with more oh, weird yeah. stuff. We, we got to bring yeah. that back. I do like that segment. I like that segment oh my of gosh, pulling yeah. it back. Mystery box. Yeah, pull stuff out of the mystery box yeah. for sure. I had all the tickets when I got pulled over for uh, reasons that led to marijuana possession. But <laughs> Right. That's yeah. usually what they're for. <laughs> yeah, well, for me. You can tell a lot uh, you know, about a person through their ticket box. Yeah. The but box now you don't get tickets. tickets for that anymore. That's true. Yeah. That's not very fair. No, uh, I, I want I, tickets. I agree with you about like um, having different mediums, right? And like trying to like being a creative yeah. period. And uh, I used to think that that label was kind of bullshit. I would be like, oh, creatives, like what does that even mean? Blah, blah, blah. And then I started doing more of it and getting out there more. And I was like, there are a lot of people who just aren't creative. And that's weird. And I don't think that's like, I, I'm kind of one of those persons that think that everybody's inherently by yeah. nature is like it's a it's a human thing and the reason we love it so much and the reason we spend so much money on entertainment is because we all actually are inherently creative yeah. and artists but i think it's sad that like the society like stamps it out of us yeah well yeah it's a muscle like anything yeah. like you go to the gym over and over you're gonna build some muscles you know even like like me i could build a couple muscles if i go to the gym you know but and I always say that, too. I do think people are inherently creative. But if you're not doing anything to exercise that, mm -hmm. you know, if you're because creativity also I'm banging it again. Creativity is hard. It's not easy. It's exhausting. It's it is like I'm in the middle, like I'm in the middle of a creative process in my life right now with like yeah. a concept I'm working on. And it's in it's not there yet. Like I can feel the butt of it. And it hurts. Every day I've been forcing myself to sit down and journal through it. And mm. I hate it. I hate it. It's I don't not like journaling fun. either. Jur but you kind of have to do it, don't you? Yeah, just journaling through this, trying to get the idea out. And I know it's there. And the only way I'm going to get to this thing mm. is every day practicing, like being inspired by things, going and looking at things in different ways, writing, whatever it is. But so many people don't want to do the work it takes to get to the reward. Oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where their creativity really I feel like I work from. with a lot of emerging artists here at Solus, right? We have a lot of people who, we work, we work with artists from all levels. There's people who are mid-career, uh, who need us for printing or, you know, installing their shows at other big galleries. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have, like, um, artist support meetings and, like, some we talk with younger artists. And I feel like a lot of my job is kind of, like, explaining to them how much work is it actually takes to get to point A to point B. And mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that's not just art. I'm sure that's like a lot of in any industry or, you know, even like making pencils or something. Yeah. I'm sure you don't, I'm sure you don't <laughs> yeah. start out like you make a couple pencils and then you have a bunch of customers for pencils. It just doesn't happen that way. Right. Well, so. I also think, I mean, this is taking it down. When I think of like my phone and like social media, oh, whatever it is, it. Instagram, TikTok, blah, yes. blah, blah. I noticed I want to go to those things when I don't want to feel anything. When mm. I don't want to work for anything, sometimes when I'm like, when I've been like working on something and my brain just, it's that point where I should stick with it because I'm on the cusp of something. But instead I go, oh, my brain feels like Doom electric scroll. right now. I just want to go lay on my bed, charge my phone that's dying and scroll. Scroll, scroll, scroll. And the then Doom suddenly scroll. three hours, two hours, 15 minutes, whatever amount of time yeah. goes by. And then... And it's, it's just, gone and you don't get it back. And then you miss that little moment. Like it's, and so I think that's happening a lot too, where everyone's mm. just like, I don't want to work for this reward. I want this immediate reward of. Yeah. Yeah. Instant gratification. You think mm -hmm. it's a generational thing? No, I think it's a technology thing. I think we're all like, I think the same shit happens over and over again. And mm -hmm. people like don't fundamentally change that much. You know, I'm sure we've had the same arguments. Like we have the same arguments about television, right? We're always like, Oh, TV is going to rot your brain out. And maybe it did, but, uh, <laughs> but also people were like, you know, talking about radio in the same way. Like, I feel like anytime there's entertainment, people tend to a fear monger around it. Uh, and it's just the newer and, and more intense and effective it is, the scarier it feels mm -hmm. to people. 
I think that's one of the reasons, like, I work in VR primarily. Like, I love virtual reality. I love uh, being online. I'm a very much, like, the advocate for doom scrolling, for social media. For I like it. And I can defend it uh, from all these different ways because I find it to be uh, my creative outlet. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people feel that way, too. And I think that it's actually kind of helped people see how hard of work being creative is. Because if somebody gets, like, a big social media following... The next thing you know, they've got burnout. They've got, you know, they feel that pressure to create. Yeah. And then they're starting to think about their content. And then you start like, you know, you know, doing the things that we do as artists, like nitpicking what you're spending your time with and how to improve it. Um, but it is, I think people just get scared because stuff is new. And there are things that are like we were talking a little bit before we started recording about AI and Spotify, right? Mm -hmm. We've been I think we mentioned that on one of these earlier episodes, but it is like that's stuff that's real and happening and affects people and needs to be addressed and looked at and, and thought about. Uh, the, the fact, we're talking about the fact that like Spotify is now making up artists with AI and just replacing humans uh, with completely generated work that was made off of the work of other humans. Mm -hmm. And so, and the main reason they're doing this is so they don't have to pay artists anymore. And, and that sucks, right? And like, there's no getting around that that sucks and it's not good. But it's also not good, not only because you're not getting paid, it's not good because the music's going to suffer, right? Yeah. right. Like it's, a, it's a chomped up uh, digital creation. And I'm sure that will happen with uh, movies as well. Yeah. yeah. That's well, next. What I hope will happen, what, yeah. like trying to see the silver lining, is that people that do, cr cr people, I feel like we, the reason we connect with art and music and artists is because they sometimes like it's easier for them sometimes like you hear a song of somebody went through something and then you go i'm going through that right now yeah, and totally. i feel what this person's feeling and i think that maybe the silver lining will be that real artists whether it's musicians like just create like people who are really doing it are gonna have another avenue they're gonna all go this way so if you want the fake stuff Mm. Go to Spotify for the fake stuff, but maybe right. the real stuff is going to find its own platform somewhere. Going to live, maybe live music will really like have a surgence again for people that need that. And I think that you know, kind of did happen already too, mm -hmm. right? And and it's it, I think you're right, not dead on, and that it will just make people the more they're aware of it, mm -hmm. and that and I think that's going to be hard for them not to be aware of like you know this is a fake thing. Although like you know Morgan's always talking about yeah. you're not going to be able to tell in the future. You'll really will not be able to tell if they get good enough. But they will have to probably legislate the then just the disclosure of it yes. at some point. Actually, they're but, working ASCAP and BMI. Mm -hmm. They're working on a law that they're getting ready to mm -hmm. push forward Good. right now, yeah. protecting. Because in America, we're like already Europe has started those guidelines, and oh, Europe's they ahead ham. of us. They're like, yeah. but, but they, they also had in America. <laughs> well, they yeah. had some crazy <laughs> meme laws. In Europe, they're yeah. trying in, with this I heard idea. About these people going to jail. Yeah, people going to jail for, for sharing memes. a meme. Like that's not good. You gotta. There's got to be a middle ground between the two. But what were you saying about live music earlier? Is like, yeah, that when um, streaming happened, Napster happened. You know, file sharing happened. MP3s became the dominant format. That did push live performance a lot mm -hmm. because it was not. It was a lot harder to make money off your record. So people would just go on tour a lot more because yeah. it was easier to sell a live ticket. And that's when T-shirts went up in price for bands. Yeah, so fifty dollars <laughs> a T-shirt. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it started doing things well, like even like vi like record like vinyl records. Yeah. that is the only form of physical music that has like increased. Like you know, yeah, it died for exactly. a minute. Never, remember, there was a period like I'm dating myself, but there was a period yeah. when no one bought re like records were just like. It was right as like Napster started. It was all that was the thing. Nobody was buying records, records, and then suddenly it was almost like the this like dust cloud settled, and yeah. people started like realizing, oh, like vinyl. It sounds really cool. You hear that crackle, but uh -huh. aside from that, it's this physical thing. You get to feel like you're a part of this. Well, like I, artistic thing it's about the cover right. going shopping it's having an analog experience. recording it's an actual waveform yeah like, you know, do you remember your first record physical media um 
I stole all my parents' records. Yeah, <laughs> nice, I did. Nice, I, nice. I, I did too. I did though, definitely I, too. But you know, on that point, though, about the the crackling vinyl sound, yeah. I think you know I've done a lot of music production digitally, and like I think that that's one of the first things that popped up is like something you could add to your digital track I was trying to emulate that right. crackling yeah. sound it was like oh you want that crackling vinyl sound and yeah. everyone's trying to get the warmth back trying to get the the realism mm -hmm. back which is really funny like, phenomenon for me like if i want to have a mood in my house because i get like especially when i'm want it when i'm like i'm like it's a rainy day i mm. feel i want to tap into like creativity whatever that is for me like i have to have a, a creative space mm -hmm. so what i'll do is like i like i have this incense this specific incense that i like to light and then i like the lighting a certain way and i'll put a record on yeah. and it just makes this it makes me want to be at home yeah doing like whether it's working on collage or writing, you know, just being inspired, whatever, because creativity is just this, I feel like for me, it's just this thing. Nebulous. It's, it is. It's like, cloud. for me, it's like, for you me, it's like higher into. power right there. It's the most incredible <laughs> yeah. thing, oh, but it's not, it's not just, that's why like, I always say, I just make stuff. I like to just go with where the energy is coming from. Mm -hmm. But like, but yeah, a lot of times it involves putting on, a record making your mood like yeah. setting your mood. i want to try something new next time i what? next time i do collage i just want to i want to get a fog machine and just like <laughs> yeah i feel very mystical and, and like in a dragon yeah. cave honestly you should and just a uh, live stream it while you're doing it that people, would be, people awesome. will be like what is going on why is this guy in the fog machine yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it is weird i remember as a kid i used to love dry eyes yeah like my yeah. mom would bring home dry eyes from the budget and i'd be like you just Whoa, eat it. potions you put it in the glass i think that's dangerous <laughs> is that I want, a little bit. someday i want Shit. when i have like millions of dollars uh -huh. someday <laughs> i want a ride i just want to have a ride that you can go on like with animatronics you know, and the, like fog it, machines. That might be the thing that makes like, you the million dollars, though. If you find some <laughs> angel investors, anybody listening to this right now who works in uh, <laughs> in I ride creation ride and, and theme parks, uh, we've got a, you go an on idea. the big like black egg thing, like on the haunted mansion. What would it be like? That describe your cool. ride for yeah. us, like What's just the ride. The, oh my gosh! How well, would it, what's gonna I know happen? There would definitely be ghosts. There would it would just basically it's in the Disney Haunted Mansion, but <laughs> call it Kendra's Haunted I Mansion. Love it. well, I'm down. It's gotta smell like like when you because I grew up in Florida, yeah. so we had we always had season passes to Disney. And mm -hmm. we go all the time for whatever reason. And like haunted I Haunted Mansion was your channel. Oh my gosh, Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean. And then if it was like if we were at Epcot, I just wanted to be in the big silver ball. Mm -hmm. There's the journey into time. And they, you go in and you see like Socrates and Plato and you see them all as animatronics. And at one point you could smell, they had like um, fake smoke, like fake smoke smell. Weird. And it was the best smell. Like, and <laughs> I always, if I smell that, like when I smell certain bonfire incense, it takes me right back to I, being in the You want to make like an in-person version of your collage clippings that's like 3D and fully immersive is what yeah, it sounds like Yeah, but it's like got to be me. animatronics. animatronics. I would want manic, like creepy mannequins. Did you catch really. um, Captain EO when it was there? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, we were Is that Universal or Disney? Did. That was at Disney. It was at the future, it was in Futureland at Disney in, in LA, in that's, Anaheim. I think I that's, that's I think. it was Michael Jackson and <gasps> Star Wars combination. And Francis oh, Ford Coppola, I think Francis yeah, Ford Coppola might have been involved. Yeah. And it, uh, I know what you mean about animatronics. Steven though. Spielberg, George yeah. Lucas, and Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. They were all involved. Yeah. Yeah. I think wild. I did go to that. But I remember I being in that. line for that shit as a kid, and like you're saying, animatronics are something kind of special, because mm -hmm. like I remember being in line for it, and there was like a crashed like spaceship thing with like uh, R2D2 was there, and there was some yeah. other robot, and they were like entertaining you in the line. I They're was like, whoa! It blew my fucking mind awesome. as a kid. Oh, and ET, the ET one too. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah, have you ever been to Stu Leonard's? No. What the hell is that? Holy I know, is that shit. steak? Is that like Sizzler? Wait, is that, the, is that the grocery, it's a grocery store, store on Long Island? Yeah, yeah. And they also have one near the Tap and Z. Okay. And, but basically, they have animal electronics like dancing sticks of butter and cows and farmers. <laughs> what? And they all That's sing. Awesome. And it's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's pretty damn creepy. I need to go there. But it's quite the experience. Like, there's no separate aisles. You have to go throughout the whole shop. They have, so you have to look all the food. And they have them And at, yeah, every nook and cranny, you'll see like a dancing, uh, like a Do people go sunflower. to this store just to experience it? 
I yeah, want to. I, I want to do a bunch of drugs and go like now. Yeah, I want to shut the studio down and take a road trip right now. Yeah, we can show some pictures up here. See, you can yeah. show some expand pictures. the oh, yeah. show and do field trips. Oh my God, that Stew would letters. be imagine podcast field trip, lucky time field trip. Why not? We have, I mean, this whole podcast kit is portable. We can throw this in a couple bags yeah. and do this anywhere we want. That would be awesome. We let us know what you would like to see. Should we go to Stu Leonard's? Do you think they'll let us do an episode there? Let us I know in the comments. So. Please, I would like to go. Let yeah. me know when you yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, so once you see I'm the going. pictures, you're gonna. Lose I might your never mind. leave. <laughs> <laughs> And Chuck E. Cheese, though. did you ever experience the original Chuck E.? Yeah. There's a photo of me with, like, when Chuck E. was, like, extremely creepy. I remember, yeah. I think my cousin had his birthday there, and, he, yeah. I, I remember, was, though, I remember this. Remember the they scary were dark. One. They used to be scary. Yeah, they are dark. dark. I like that. Very amber, low, amber lit. Well, do you ever play Fe uh, Five Nights at Freddy's? I haven't. No. But I kind of want movie, to. Maybe. Yeah, I haven't seen the yeah, movie yet. It's okay. I haven't seen the movie. It's all right. I've seen just like literally hours and hours and hours of uh, Let's Play YouTubers like playing Five Nights at Freddy. And I played it once because I had to because I downloaded it. Right. And then they also made that movie with Nicolas Cage, which was a complete ripoff of that movie before that movie came out. Really? What was that? Yeah. It was called like oh, Wally's yeah. World or something oh. like that. He didn't have. I started to watch it. It was terrible. Oh, he, no. doesn't, he doesn't talk. He doesn't speak. He doesn't have any speaking lines in the uh, in that I movie. I wonder how much money that saved the production to have Nicolas Cage not mm -hmm. talk. Probably quite I a bit. I feel like to yeah. get the, how to get Nicolas Cage in a movie is basically like he's on cameo. Do you want mm -hmm. me to be in your movie? And like, <laughs> I feel like that anyone can put him in a movie. That had yeah. to have been difficult for him to be in a movie where there's no lines because you figure he's always like freaking out about this, that, the other thing. And like, I mean, vampires, so. was that vampires kiss? That one where he like flips out about the alphabet. That's still one of my favorite oh, yeah, performances. Of him. It's the so weirdest many. performance I've ever seen of his. Yeah. I feel like with that, like I've always, so when I, I always, I judge an actor, but the movies they pick, but really yeah. like they have to either, they have an aid, like have somebody reading scripts for them or mm -hmm. they're reading them, but every actor it's up to them to so pick their movies. So when you see an actor doing a bunch of weird movies, it makes yeah. me wonder about their personality. Well, I, I heard like, that he has no choice. He financially, because his lifestyle has to. Yeah, didn't he buy not like stop. that? He bought some like horrible mansion in, in Louisiana that was like known for being like uh, a experiment or like experimenting on people back in the day. Like, uh, oh yeah, and he, like, he's bought, known to pick haunted places. He likes that shit. He's New got Orleans. like he a, had a haunted apartment too. Like a tiny pyramid. He's going to be buried in, in New Orleans. No, <laughs> nice. that's what I heard. He's awesome. like some sort of I'm pyramid excited. mausoleum. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, do you know about pyramid power and organ organite and pyramid power? Organite, that's right. No. I need some of that. No, you don't know about this. It'll like, keep the lizard people it was, away. It's in like the '70s or something that got really popular. There's an idea that if you fill resin with a bunch of these heavy metals, specific metals, that like you know does things with energy and like you know spirit. It's like pseudo spirituality, pseudo science, spirituality, woo nonsense. But like it'll bust clouds. People make these like tubes that they say will get rid of clouds. And then um, my uncle was really into it. And he can, and I think this is like kind of a power of suggestion, like the way our brains work. What would be my, the reason to get rid of clouds? I don't know. Just to to, to do it for the just fun. Just do it. But like, see that cloud over there? Yeah. Bust Watch it. this shit. Cloud busting. It's called it's Damn. called cloud busting when really? you stand and stare at a cloud with your feet in water and then stare at it and then it goes away and people think that they're doing it, but they're just waiting for a cloud to dissipate because they're always really? going away. It's a really funny world. I might do that. But my, my okay, my grandpa, though, was, like, really um, a straight-laced dude. You know, he worked for, like, the Treasury and immigration and the government. And, you know, he, he yelled at my dad for having long hair when it was, like, my length of hair now. Uh, and But he even got convinced because my uncle got really into this pyramid stuff. And then he came with, like, a little tin pyramid and put his cigarette underneath it. And he was like, try it now. And then, you know, my grandpa smoked the cigarette and was like, it's way better. It's true. What? And like, I just think people are very suggestible. Mm -hmm. And so speak on that note, um, where should people, let's suggest to them right now to go check out your latest show or download something oh, yeah. of you or what's happening with you. I mean, just right now, the easiest place to find me, I'm pretty active on social media. Nice. Um, Instagram, Kendra Morris, or cool. you can find me on at record stores <laughs> i say support don't tell people where to come store. find you in real life <laughs> yeah <laughs> find me on manhattan avenue um spot <laughs> just look up kendra morris and you'll find me if you want to see my visual art stuff yeah if you go to my website under visual art section you'll see all the videos and like things i've done so, do you have any shows coming up playing any music soon no i've been on tour 
pretty much nonstop the last Damn. two years. And right now, so I you're, and you're, you're, so ready you're writing in between. You're yeah, I wrote in, yeah, I've been re- working on a record you now. You do not stop. <laughs> you do not I stop. Like, we can't, right? Yeah. So, but I mean, once that new album drops, right? I guess right back, back to road. hitting the road. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that it's is very badass. Good. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for joining. You're going to do a little ditty for us, right? Yeah, yeah. You're going to do a little performance. Excellent. So stick around for that. And if you are not yet on the Patreon, go sign up. We have hour-long extended episodes there. Thank you so much for joining us today, though. It was good chatting. Yeah. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, now I'm going to restart the camera. Hey, yo. All right, we're back. Now we're in the second half. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for being a supporter on Patreon. Uh, I I love your idea of, of like a of an animatronic like installation piece. I, I've had some similar it. ideas. That shit's so expensive, right? Yeah, I was just about to so say. So one of the reasons, one of the thing, I want to try and convince you to try VR because I'm right now loving, loving, loving creating worlds in VR. All right, oh. it's getting easier and easier to do and. For all of the, all of the. Explain right, the difference between this yeah. and Minecraft, though. Well, well, the difference between this and Minecraft is that it's, I mean, it's not that different. Minecraft's pretty awesome, uh, but you're, it, you know, you have head tracking. You're, it's, it's virtual reality instead of a flat screen. But this stuff is going to start getting so advanced so yeah. fast. Uh, and with the AI stuff, the, one of the good things about AI, like I like AI for certain things, and the thing I like about the thing I'm excited for is really soon you're gonna be able to put on a headset and be like, okay, create a field, uh, put a building here, you know, change it, big, make it bigger, want the windows more rounded. And like, you'll just be able to talk to your headset like Star Trek, uh, like the Star Trek holodeck. And it'll be able to like create a world for you. And you'll be able to just speak to your computer and it will like kick out what you want and then you can tweak it to your heart's content. And I'm doing that right now with, uh, with the Horizon world. Uh, it is the, it's like gotten a lot of slack, rightfully so, or flack. I mean, it's gotten a lot of flack, rightfully so for being kind of lame, looking pretty whack. Uh, and, and <laughs> you know, it just, it doesn't look very good, but the reason it doesn't look very good is because of what it's capable of, which is like everything you see in it, you're, is actually generated inside of it. Like Minecraft, how like Minecraft, wow. you know, is like all these big mountains and all these things are made out of these blocks that you can mine and stack. It's the same thing with this, like it's basic shapes and you can generate them and paint them and give them different like, uh, you know, textures or whatever. So you can build a so really virtual God. Yeah, kind of. It's like, you know, you just make whatever you want to make. And similarly, like when you're in that creative zone, I'll be like making my little weird world and I'll look out the window and it's like, oh, it's sunrise. I've been doing this for seven hours straight wow. now. And I'm like, oh, shit, I go back to it. But I feel like you can make a prototype. You can kind of like you know make these big scale projects that you want to that you want to create you can make like a prototype of it in like vr i'll enjoy vr more when my body just doesn't work anymore <laughs> yeah but like you know what my body or your body already doesn't work what are you talking about you're always like my back i know ascension <laughs> get in it it's already ascension time. to the next world yeah I, well, I always joke that I'm ready for the, the vat of jelly, you know, just like yeah. slap me in the nutrient <laughs> jelly tank and like plug me in. Oh, like the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, or like, uh, the, like, yeah, like the Matrix. I mean, we're I'll not, take the pill. I, I remember reading some articles about like when, because Apple has that, mm-hmm. those goggles that came out or what were the new Vert VR the thing. Vision Pros. Yeah, yeah, and I just do think that that's all coming, like it's all going to come and merge, like you're saying, and it's, terrifying to me why is it so scary many, it's the unknown like i mm. i'm i love like this is all i know in all my years of existence is being right here in the present so it's scary because it's unknown right you know like suddenly like yeah like that's scary of like when i think of like seven hours going by mm-hmm. like that um, that takes me to like di- my, some of my party days were suddenly like, oh, <laughs> oh the sun's like, those are, you know, I, I don't. But it's like when you're creating. I'm talking yeah. about the same kind of sensation when it's you're cutting. Great... When you put the vibe on, you put your record on and you put your yeah. mood lighting on and you get when into you creating. you hear the morning birds. I mean, I do see like that in the next 20, 30, like yeah. everything's going so fast right now that, yeah, yeah suddenly like. I think that we are all, like the next generation of people, maybe like 
well, where you can come up with even it's like training for it with everybody doing the face filters now or right. playing with whether it's Snapchat or on TikTok doing the new everyone's mm. going to pick new bodies for themselves. And like, yeah. how do I I, I don't know, my, my it hurts my brain to think about <laughs> it does hurt. I, I get it. I get why it would be scary and stuff. My my point about that is kind of like it's already happened. You, you're even talking about how you scroll online when you mm-hmm. feel like you want to get away from stuff and you go in there. I feel like we already live online. Yeah. We're already basically like netizens now. Uh, there's, the, you know, the idea of the tangible, you know, stuff. And it's like, it's not like it goes away. Like, just because virtual reality exists doesn't mean the Grand Canyon's not there anymore. Right. Yeah. You know, you can still go there and you can still enjoy it. Now you can just go there and, and the get the sensation world. of enjoy, enjoying well, it without having to actually walk over there. It's also a lot safer. Yeah, definitely. People yeah. die off the Grand Canyon all it's the time. It's wild. <laughs> like yeah. selfie deaths. Well, it's safer physically, but then we also have our mental health to contend with. So or what like, about our pets? This is what yeah. I think about. I think about, I have three, I have two bulldogs uh-huh. and an old crotchety weenie dog. Oh, I and like them. they stare at me all the time. One of them is wearing his donut because yeah. he had a hot spot that he kept licking. So we've got uh, this donut on him, oh. and he just stared. what's his name? His name's Jerry. Oh. Jerry, and he just loves us. Like he just mm-hmm. gazes at me, and I what sometimes I think about like if I'm on my phone a lot or something. And I'm just thinking, he's not on his phone. He's just staring at me. <laughs> yeah. And so I think if we're all in virtual, what about all the pets? What are they going to do? They're going to be like. Well, that's the, they, that's actually why, um, that's why Apple is, I think Apple's great. And I actually, I'm a big fanboy, And I think that they're going to be the ones to make this happen. Uh, be, it, virtual reality has actually been like 200 years in the making. Uh, it's. The first writings about it came from 1800s. Wow. The first equipment for it came from around that same time as well. 1800s? Yeah, 1800s. So explain something. to us what they considered virtual reality at that well, time. Well, it's not that they considered it virtual reality. That terminology didn't gain popularity until like, you know, the 90s. Got it. Um, but the actual equipment and technologies that are used in virtuality started back then, stereoscopic viewers were hugely popular, uh, which was basically two pictures taken at slightly different angles with a little lens in the middle. Oh. Right. And so, you know, back then before the turn of the 19, you know, 1900s, people were like, there was stereoscopic pornography was like hugely popular. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody was like looking at these little like 3D porno papers. Uh, and then the military started developing something called the Sword of Damocles in the 60s. And that was, um, I know, like epic name, right? Sort of Damocles. And that was a wireframe augmented reality thing that would overlay like a, a cube in your actual vision. Oh. So it was originally glass, not blocking your eyes. I think that's the thing that freaks people out about it is it feels like you're putting on blinders mm-hmm. and you're like, and you're ignoring the regular world. And if you look at the Apple Vision Pro, that's like they have that goofy ass hack where they try to replicate your eyes on a screen. And so it's like looking at your eyes and showing a a 3D recreation of your eyes out to your pets. So your pets don't know the difference because they look at you and they think they're seeing your eyes still. And the idea is that it's going to integrate with um, reality. And it's going, and I'm actually kind of sad about it. I'm actually going to be a little bit bummed out when um, when the AR stuff surpasses the VR stuff. And now we're going to be like a completely integrated and, mm. and together. We're like, there'll be a little right. virtual dude hopping around on this table. And that's what everyone's so scared of VR about is because you're out of the real world. But like, that's the magic. To so me. everyone's just going to be tripping. I mean, balls. That's what you're <laughs> <saying>. <laughs> See, so basically, you're on acid. <laughs> like, hey, that's I not the worst like, thing. Like, I, yeah. I do not like, um, uh, I think I have a, I, I have a brain rot because I my vocab has been going to hell lately. Mm-hmm. But I didn't. I've never liked acid or tripping or anything mm, yeah. because I don't. Lo- I love reality. I love like yeah. reality. I've never liked uh, hallucinogenics for that reason. I feel like, like I trip without hallucinogenics. Yeah. yeah. But um, throughout the years that I mean I don't do much of anything other than smoke weed and drink now. But um, when I went to Woodstock '99. You know, I had triple dipped Eric Cartman. Triple dipped Eric Cartman. Yeah, that's yeah. so funny. It's and it was the first sentence. time I, I tripped acid, and 
the guy that sold it to me looked like Jerry Garcia. He had a staff <laughs> and a tie dye shirt. It was awesome. Um, but I did have a bad experience with shrooms, though, because I ate too much. Mm. And um, I basically saw myself from the corner of my room, like getting up and doing things in my room. And then time started to speed up mm -hmm. and people are coming in my room and I'm living life and I'm seeing it's going faster and I'm aging and it's going faster. Right. And to the point where all my emotions just stopped. Yeah. Oh, you became yeah. a sociopath. Or you just I, I just felt like no love, no happiness, no nothing. It just, just stopped. And then I looked away. outside of the, I was at some sort of like hippie festival in the middle of a forest somewhere yeah. in Western New York. And I, I went to my friend, Dan, who was like also tripping balls. I'm like, Dan, I don't think, I, I think we're dead. He's like, That's we've common. always been dead, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my <laughs> Dan sounds intense. <laughs> yeah. Was, Dan I, sounds a little bit of a buzzkill. <laughs> well, he was I, going through it. I had some like intense experiences too where I was like, mm -hmm. I just want to come back. I just want to come back. Because right. it was just, just sometimes like I've had like weird you don't lose psychic control. experiences right. yeah, or things scary. where the their, the veil is like gone and it Listed. just suddenly like DMT. Like, I would never do DMT. I've done DMT. Oh my! Oh, wow. What happened? Do you see was the it? elves? The I did. Elves? I saw the you elves. saw the machine oh, elves. I nice. saw the elves. They were green and it was like a kaleidoscope. So it was cool. Yeah. It was really fast. It was. It's yeah, it was quickly. cool, but it was so quick and well, it was fun. I think what scares me but, is people have told me like a DMT trip could seem like a thousand yeah. years. And like that's, that is what I don't want. I'm like, no, yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. come back quickly. Yeah, it was just, I mean, it was a really long time ago. My parents that's are so awesome, gonna, though. My parents are going to watch this. <laughs> it was with my brother. Well, they have to be on the Patreon to watch this part. So I was, uh, I've never done it, but I was talking about it with my dad. He's like, oh, yeah, I did that in the 70s. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and yeah, my brother best. used to be really good at finding things exactly. online, and Silk Road. He, he ordered it online, and he was like, "Oh yeah, Silk Road." Back in the day, before the FBI caught up with them. Yeah. Now um, he makes a lot. I think one of the guys from Silk Road is doing very well. Like, started his own like business. I watched some documentary about like the hitman. Like, tried to have a hit on him. Uh, and there was like, because that was the thing about so Silk Road. Hitman through you could get Road. Hitman yeah, as well. So wild. you could hire someone to murder somebody else as well, which was a little <laughs> bit more dangerous than like taking crazy. some acid and feeling like the one with the nature, you know. That was the thing for me was like, you know, I also did LSD and I, I liked it. Um, but I, strangely, it made me feel more connected to the, the normal, natural world mm -hmm. uh, because it gives you the sensation that everything is alive. I did love that. Yes, yeah, you 100%. feel like uh, this thing has feelings, you know, like your microphone mm -hmm. is a being and it feels like you feel like that yeah. sensation and it's kind of a lie. Right. But it's not. And it's like it gives you a, it makes you nicer, I think, because it's like, oh, yeah. it made me like an ant. It made me a, a, a Shintoist. Right. Well, yeah, I would wind up like hugging trees, watching yeah. it breathe. Like I loved that. Like right. if in the more, if I was in a more natural setting, yeah, and just me and a tree, I was happy. But if I was, if there was just one personality that was a little bit, little off, there was a girl that I had done some mushrooms with, and she had some weird vibes, and I. It was just me and her, and I could not oh, get it. No. Just no, want to be away worst. from her that night. And you yeah. know, it, when you're tripping, there's no time. And I was like, yeah. with you're her trapped. for years. And then this was yeah. in the city. This was in Florida years in Florida. ago. Yeah, I was yeah. with her, for, and I just couldn't. I was just like, and I just wound up like find like hanging out by myself, finding yeah. anywhere I could go to get away from her. Yeah. And I was like, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Where's my suck. tree friends? This girl. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You need I the want tree my trees. Friends. That and is what's funny. really weird about that, and this is where I was saying, like, you've, I've had, like, this is where I do believe in, like, psychic. And, like, mm. I remember I had a boyfriend at the time. And I, in that, during that whole, like, eight hour, whatever of us tripping, I kept thinking, she's after my boyfriend. She's after my boyfriend. Like, mm. out of nowhere, I was thinking this. Came down from the trip, blah, blah, blah. Life went on. Years later, I would reconnected with this boyfriend and we were friends. Mm. And I'm just telling him about this. He, I don't remember if yeah. I told him about the experience, but we're talking. This girl came up in our conversation. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, she, she was like putting the moves on me. <laughs> you were right. And I was You're right. right. It was right at that shit. time because the it, whole thing. And it was like, I knew it. And then to find out 10 years later, just in a right. random. It's Yeah, that's like you knew it then. Uh, you picked it up. And, mm -hmm. You know, that, that's totally, that's the way it works. It's true. Oh, that's, that's funny stuff, though.
I, I don't know. How do we get from, we I got, like how we went from virtual reality to. It makes sense because well, we're talking about, they're tr- the you know, same. it's an, it's an alternating of reality. And like, we're talking about like AR well, and AR and how it's going to do it. Probably be insane to take acid and then go into virtual reality. Oh my gosh. How uh, about that? Yeah. That, that's <laughs> meta. That's like that meta. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> have I actually? That's a good idea. I don't think I have. Maybe I you should right. do it and report back. Well, one thing that I've noticed that's very true is that, um, that very weird about it is that if, um, you if you take hallucinogens and then you look at a screen, which is what AI, which is what VR is, the visual hallucinations don't happen. So like mm. I went to go see the Holy Mountain at the, at oh the movie theater, God. and that's film even. That's not even like a digital screen. On that's acid? film on acid. Oh, yeah. and, uh, I like mean, a, I guess if you're going to see a movie on acid, that, that would, would be, be one, the one of the right? <laughs> so, but I was at the Castro Theater, which is like a beautiful, ornate Art Deco, like you know, big Art Nouveau, almost like you know, just really, really ornate, beautiful theater. And we're watching it, and you know, coming up on it, and the, the worst part, of course, was that lady in the tree with the, you know, with like the <laughs> the geese and stuff at the end. That was like terrifying, but. My point is like you're looking at it and then something's different on the screen. It, you're just feeling. It's just all emotion and feeling. But then when the lights came up in the actual theater, the theater itself was fucking crawling. You know, oh like my. moving. Like everything in the theater was moving. And those and it, it doesn't work on screen. So Imagine I actually seeing think Blue it would man group on acid. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, that would be good. That would be good. But I don't think it'll work. I don't think it works. It won't work because it's a screen. And like for some reason your brain does not like you. Uh-huh. Your brain does not do the same things as looking at a real object, which is, you know, an argument for why virtual reality cannot ever take over uh, and replace real, real reality. But you have to do some experiments. I'm not saying that I want it to replace reality, but I do love the the fantasy aspect of it. You know, it fools my brain enough to go into somewhere for a while and be like, oh, this is cool. Like, uh, this is a unique experience mm-hmm. and it's stuff do stuff that you can't ever do. Like, I think it's lame that people re- like wanted to work in virtuality. And you know, like they're yeah, just really my desk. That. You should see my desk in virtual reality. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, have yeah. the coolest bulletin board. Well, I wish it was cool. <laughs> it, it would make sense if, like, oh, I'm going to go log into the office for the day, and you put it on your like in a pirate ship in space. Yeah. But instead, they're like they're recreating like one to one file cabinets, and it's like, why have you done this? <laughs> <laughs> or they build like they rebuild the set from office space. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. And all the characters. Awesome. That's what it looks like, to be honest. Like there yeah. are a lot of virtual workrooms that like just look like nice workrooms, and it's like just build a workroom or or like make something weird in here i don't yeah. know people are funny um but yeah it, it it's an interesting thing you're, we're talking about like being creative and trying to keep yourself open i think it's hard to focus you know for me that's i have a hard time focusing on one thing or another mm-hmm. i'm always open and like trying to do one thing and i feel like when it takes off like when your um your your animations kind of mm-hmm. took off it feeds you into wanting to do it more right mm-hmm. but then do you also feel like a little bit of like self-sabotage that you have to watch out for like you it starts working and you're like okay it's done i want to move on now or, do you, or does it just feed you and make you want to do it even more you mean like per project or on a broader scale like on a broader scale like you know it, like for me i had a tiktok that yeah. popped off and then uh as soon as it was done i just kind of as soon as it popped off i got excited for a little while and then i very quickly was just like eh I'm not going to upload any more video. I'm not, yeah. I, I just stopped doing it. And it was like, why? That's the one thing that's actually working right now. Like, you should post it more. And, and when I, was the last time you posted? I don't know, last month. I oh, think. my God. Yeah. Naughty boy. I know, I know. But I've been focusing on doing this because I like this podcast yeah. more now. That's what I have I've, I've definitely, like, that's a good question because I do have people reach out to me, like, for animation videos. And, like, yeah, I could do more animation and, like, I ask for a specific fee and I know it's going to bring in more money than say my music does sometimes, Mm -hmm. but it's so much work mentally, creatively. Like I have to like really be careful about like, what, what, what do I need for myself as an artist right now? Is it to do like these animation videos for other people, which is when I'm there in my head? Yes. But if I'm in the middle of like wanting to write a record wanting to do something that is really like fulfilling for me, like how you're just saying you like doing this right now. Right. I have to like see which way the pendulum, which is, which is going to be thing. And I find myself lately, I've been saying no to, I've had people reach out for videos. I, mm. I worked on a movie, you know, and like, yeah. that was cool. Cause it worked out for the time, but now I'm like, okay, but that's not like, it's just like picking which, you know, is mm. it, 
yeah, but it's like, yeah, what do you want? What? Do you feel like money ruins the art? Because, like, I, I hear that a lot from people. They're like, when this, once it starts making money, it stops, like, it stops a lot of other aspects of it. I think sometimes, because once you're making money, then you're spending more money. Mm. You know, you're going out to, like, oh, I, and then you feel like you need to be making more money to keep up with. Your lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, oh, my God, that's the thing about New York, too, right? People are always like, oh, you know, you're going to make it rich. It's like. No matter how rich you get here, you're never rich enough. There's never rich, there's always nope. a place to spend your money back. Oh, you want the full yeah. floor penthouse? Uh, how about a helicopter desserts on Wednesdays? You know, um, like it's definitely there's yeah. there's always something to take your money here, and uh, it's really hard not to uh, indulge in it and to enjoy it. You know, because like why else are we here? I don't know. I, I got a question for you. Do you feel because you've been living in New York for how long? Since when to when now? Uh, this will be 20 years. 20 years, uh, October right. October 27th. And you were here throughout the whole pandemic. Uh-huh. Yep. So I have a friend who is on the last show, uh, and it, the last one I dropped anyway. And he said that he felt like the pandemic irrevocably and permanently and seriously changed New York forever. And I said, no, you just moved to Colorado. Now you, <laughs> now, and now you don't live here anymore. Yeah. And you don't know. So I don't feel like that. I think the city definitely was changed for a period when it yeah, was. It, it was definitely like, went through a lot yeah. of change. It was creepy to shut it down. It was like weird to walk outside and see nobody outside for like almost a year. But I don't think it's changed no. that much. It was interesting. Yeah. I think everything changed. Not just New York. Like, it's not just a New York yeah, thing. It's changed. the entire Across world the changed yep. forever. Mm, yeah. I feel it in myself emotionally. Like I used to love like I used to go out all the time. Yeah. I loved going out. And I don't know if this exactly correlates to COVID, but I have noticed a difference since then. I don't like going out like I used to. Like mm. I really like being in i've become an introvert i like mm. to have my space be creative like i feel and when i go out i have like more anxiety of like i really hate small talk but when you go out what are you doing small, do talk. small talk and i like i itch from it and i'm just like <laughs> i just want to go rain home today yeah, thank How's you for the weather thank you for like powering through to come on a podcast yeah then, that's did. pretty much all that's just all small talk all day long no but i like like i love yeah. like i love doing interviews i love doing like the podcast things like this like yeah. i love that because it's more of like but like in a bar when it's loud and it's someone are you who, sure it's not just getting older because like i feel like as i get older i, I don't want to get out my either. reasoning is I'm, I'm in a lot more pain yeah I, I have a lot less energy for me it's like i want to i feel like i'm wasting my time and i used yeah. to not care about that and i was used to be more about making connections and less about my craft and mm -hmm. now i'm like oh i want to focus on my craft but i do think it traumatized a lot of people you also, about social as you get, getting well. older you realize there's less time to do those things mm -hmm. yeah it's when true. you have that many ideas and you want to accomplish you're like well shit midlife yeah. crisis i better get down to it yeah exactly yeah that's weird yeah dude. you definitely see time different like it goes so much faster but mm -hmm. i don't know i definitely have noticed some just i don't think it's new york though it's everywhere everything's changed i think yeah better or worse. it's more everyone's expensive. going online too you more know, it's expensive like, definitely i think it oh helped my gosh, push right? everything. oh everything. yeah well that's like this yeah, is bizarre too. the inflation is insane this i is fucking yeah. nuts. i bought a coffee down i was just i've been yeah. paying attention to like prices lately it's like i swear like we like i was at gregory's i got a coffee yeah. or there's a coffee shop across from my house i love supporting like local right. coffee shops but um it's crazy. I was just thinking of the price. Like average coffee in New York is anywhere between like six and eight dollars. Yep. Yeah. Do you yep. remember when you'd go to McDonald's and get a combo Dollar. meal for less than five dollars? You could McDonald's get a McDonald's meal. McDonald's especially. McDonald's is like now twenty something dollars. It's like a twenty dollars yeah. for like a Big Mac meal, a large size. You can add, but the thing is, you can actually go to like a real restaurant and they're still like not twenty dollars. Like. You can go get like a, a nice homemade plate of pasta and like some protein and a salad at a real restaurant yeah. for the amount of money that fast food costs, which is like, at what point is it, um, you know, just corporate greed? When is it going to have it? a cap? Like, 
It doesn't when is it gonna stop? Day. Because we're not making even as yeah. like what's crazy with the music industry, right. musicians and touring and like yeah. your guarantees at shows. Did you know that has not changed in twenty years? Yeah. You go and you pay play a show. And like if you're an artist that's working off guarantees rather than door deals, right. you know, you've been touring for a minute and like say they say we can pay your band five hundred dollars to play to headline this night. Right. We got your meals and five hundred dollars. And like it's been that that's like a minimum usually. But for that to be what you're paying, say a five person band, yeah. um, they're driving ahead. out there. Yeah, if you're splitting it, you're and you also have to pay your gas you and your hotel. Like Sixty eight cents. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's been that that's oh, been like these guarantees have norm. not moved for twenty years. So while that hasn't moved, yep. your coffee is eight dollars. The yep. hotel rooms for like a motel eight is like 110 you know, now or something 120, crazy. 120, 130, 140 dollars plus all the hotel fees, gas, like, and it's like that even for people's wages, like things in all this stuff is growing, but people aren't making more money. It's I'm like, true. what's, yep. what's, what's going to happen? We're going to all go to virtual reality. Yeah. I and think live in a jelly. That's what they want. I mean, maybe it'll, <laughs> it might be the most tenable, reasonable thing for us to do is live in jelly pods in virtual reality. <laughs> might be signing but, up. But, you know, those headsets are still expensive. It's still like three yeah. thirty, four thousand dollars for the Apple Vision Pro. Then just give me the anyway, jelly. Just get the jelly. <laughs> Just throw me in the fucking jelly. No, I mean, unfortunately, yeah, it's a global. That's a global issue, and uh, it's got It's tough, and it's just going to keep getting worse until it doesn't. Until something changes, uh, or you know, the classic. Uh, people will only put up with so much, but like we're conditioned to put up with more and more, and it's like yeah. a slow. It's like when you raise the temperature on a frog in a pot. You know, the, they don't notice it, and then they're dead all of a sudden because they've been slowly. Really? Yeah. The frogs yeah. don't jump out of hot water. And not if you raise the temperature slowly. Oh. If you slowly turn it up, and then you can boil, you can boil them, and they won't realize. But if you throw them into hot boiling water, then they'll jump around. But if you slowly raise the temperature up for a long time, then they'll they'll get used to it. That's sad. It's very I sad, know. but it's a it's an apt uh, analogy for what's happening. And, and you know, eventually, I guess you just have to throw go out on the street. I mean, it happens a lot in Europe, and we don't. As Americans, we're like kind of sheltered from the fact that there are like inflation protests around the world, and they're like you know people just won't put up with it, and they go out and they. And they stomp around and yell until their government does something. But I don't know. They, it, that's a complex geopolitical issue. I guess the only thing we can do is make art about it, right? Yeah. And the jelly. Yeah, just make and a song jelly. about how expensive a burger is now, you know? Mm -hmm. My dad met um, Henry Rollins I mean, it was really? a long time ago. And cool. he said that Henry Rollins wouldn't shut up about burger economics, which is like if you compare... Um, it, the true value of something isn't like how many dollars it's worth, but how many hamburgers it's worth. Mm. And so it's like this car is like worth that. 400 hamburgers. Oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I love the album Wait. That makes it more Followed real. Followed up with Come In and Burn. Oh, do you have any favorite artists right now? It's like tough. any recs for people? Uh, besides obviously your own music, which they should listen to. Uh, who have I been listening to lately? I, you know, I don't know. If, I couldn't say anything specific. Mm. I'm so bad. But I will say my favorite playlists is anything like i love numero group and going down numero group rabbit holes it's basically mm. they have all this these random older artists that they've accumulated catalogs interesting and it's so much fun they have like different like you can go buy their vinyl collections too but uh -huh. like they have like basement beehive is one which is like all like obscure B-side girl group soul music oh, cool. from the 50s That's and 60s. Awesome. Or they'll have They're like... they archivists, kind of. Totally. Nice. So anything like Numero Group has been... Like, I love just going down Numero Group. Like rabbits. Nuggets. Sweet. Wasn't there an, uh, yeah. a collection called Nuggets? I'll have to check that out. Numero Group. I've never heard of it. Yeah, you name it. They have like a lot. They have like a bunch of like post-punk stuff. Are they, they on have, their own platform or do you find them on like you a can find them on platform? You can find them on Spotify. Just okay. go to new, the label Numero Group and they're a playlist. You know, I actually don't use Spotify. Like I, the first time I ever downloaded Spotify was, um, I mean, I downloaded it a while back. But oh, here's actually, I guess this is slightly interesting. I was in a band for a while and I stopped listening to music actively after we recorded our record. Yep. We don't listen to music here during the day. Yeah. He I lose like, his mind. I did yeah. it all day long. We listened to our record over and over again, listening to the takes and the recording. And then after we were done, I just never picked up actively like listening to music the same way ever again. And yeah. I've still I still kind of deal with that. <laughs> I get it. I don't, I actually like, I'll listen to my records at home. 
or sometimes I'll go down these like little playlists. Mm-hmm. But I also don't listen to like a lot of music of my peers mm-hmm. and stuff. Like I love supporting my friends, but I just feel like I don't know if it's a thing where I just want to kind of keep my brain focus i don't want to be influenced by what other people are doing too i just want to kind of stay in my own creative lane and i'm also like as an artist like i suffer from like never like i'm always like trying to like i'm never i'm always like never good enough really hard on myself but also as an artist we have egos as much as we all want to say i don't have an ego we have these huge egos totally and it's just this constant like push and pull beating myself up i'm not good enough i'm crap i'm garbage i can never be like this and then sometimes like suddenly you got this ego that's like but i couldn't do that or i couldn't right well man we are out of time unfortunately because this is getting so good um thank you for joining us though and be kind to yourself yeah be nice (laughs) give yourself a break if you're an artist and you're listening to this you know just do your thing and, and chill all right, we love you. We'll see you guys next week. Hasta la pasta. Bye. This is Kendra Morris. This song is called Night Snake. It's from my record, I Am What I'm Waiting For.
it again if you want. Awesome. Okay. Look good. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. That's not one of the new ones, obviously. That's from the just the last 